Hey there, Josh from Builder here. This video is all about setting up your events throughout your application. So what are events exactly? Events are the trigger that can start any set of logic or things that you want to happen inside of your application. It defines how users navigate your app and really the ultimate experience of what it's like to use your application. So there are two common ways that you're going to use events in particular. First, you have events tied to elements. So let's go ahead and click into our page right here and actually select this Get Early Access button. What you see when we select the Get Early Access button is on the right-hand side, this yellow events tab is selected now, and you'll see a few different events that can occur to trigger specific logic inside a builder. Now, by default, all of our different elements might have their own unique set of default events that appear here, but don't worry, every single event that exists in code can be added to any element inside of your builder project. So while you'll see a certain set right here already, if you ever wanna add any event, you can click add new event, and we're gonna give you a list of all the ones that you have available to you here with a quick description about what that particular interaction is gonna do for you. Now, we don't need to master all of these events right now, but there's four most common ones that you're gonna to wanna to be familiar with. First is a click event that lets you, whenever someone clicks a specific element, like a button, conduct some sort of logic that's tied to it. Whenever you wanna tie a specific set of logic to an event, you're gonna have this dropdown select to choose a flow. We're gonna show you flows and actions in another video, so don't worry about mastering that right now. The next common event is a change event. A really great example here is, let's say if I was filling out a form and I wanted to validate that they used a real email address as soon as they change the value of that field. I could, on a change event of that particular element, conduct logic that checks to see if it's a real email. The next two common events that you might end up using are mouse enter and mouse lead. This is basically, if my mouse enters this specific element, I want you to do this logic, and when I leave, I want you to do this logic. Now, it's a little bit different than, let's say, using a hover state in CSS, where you're using CSS to style a button if someone's hovering it, but usually you'll use a mouse enter or mouse leave event whenever you want to do more sophisticated logic, and it's not just about updating what the front-end user website looks like. It might be something more advanced, like an API call. Now, while you will most frequently set your interactions for your site inside of this events tab right here, one very frequent way that you're gonna be using actions is actually changing the event associated with the particular element on the page. Inside of your flows and actions that we'll talk about later, we have a specific action type called add, remove, or change event on element. This allows us to change that logic on the page. So I can select a specific element on the screen and then actually change the event I want associated with it. So maybe initially, because they hadn't yet filled out their form, I wanted a click event to do nothing. So I had no event assigned to it. But once they validated their form, I want the click to now go ahead and submit the form and take them to the next page. While your most common use cases for events are gonna be tied to elements themselves, there is another way in which you might wanna use events inside of Builder. I'm gonna navigate over to our app screen here and click on our app homepage. When you're on any page that has a URL assigned to it in Builder, you can click at the top left hand and go to page properties. And you'll see there's also an events tab right here. There's not any by default, but I can add any that I want. And so one thing that you might do in your applications is create something like hotkeys. So one way you could do that is that on a specific key up, I want something to happen. So I could add on a key up event, a specific key code. So if they are holding shift and control, let's say, and then they click, let's just say the letter T, I might tie it to a specific flow that is create a new task for a user and bring up the new task menu. Now, the final thing to talk about with elements are some unique builder events that are tied to specific types of elements for a repeating list element, for example, which is the element that you'll use, let's say, for displaying search results. We've added two events in particular called scroll to end. So if someone scrolls to the end of your repeating list on their screen, you can trigger an action like load the next set of data. 
or something like an after search event. So if I search it, I might want to see if there's any search results there, because if there's not, maybe I want to display an item on the page that says, hey, there's no search results right now. So those are just some custom events that Builder has created, usually tied to a specific element inside of Builder itself. 